Well, one thing I was wondering about was physical protection. MPs don't wear stab vests. That's the kind of thing that we see others who are in the community think, obviously, of police officers. That's what they wear. So that might be one form of protection. Uh, so David Amos had already put in place some, some measures, as, as, many, as have many other constituencies. MPs up and down the country, things like requ requiring appointments, uh, ID in, a, in advance. Um, but but it, is, it is difficult. If you put in place, I saw uh, Diane Abbott referred to potentially being behind a plastic screen. Diane Abbott receives a huge amount of online abuse, so I can well understand why, why she might say that. But I think a lot of MPs would be reluctant to do that because uh, if you have that screen in front of you, it, it makes it harder to connect on a personal level. Equally, if you have a police officer in the room, uh, a lot of people who go and see their MP because they're in a vulnerable position. They might not trust the police necessarily, even if, even, even if that's not well founded, you still want people to have the confidence to do it. But uh, I, I do think it may come down to just having a private security guard there who, who can give them some protection. But, it, but as I say, you're not going to be able to to protect people, uh, protect MPs in, entirely. They live in the constituency. They go to the supermarket. Uh, they go to watch a local football match. Uh, and ultimately, unfortunately, that's part of the risk that, that you have to run. And I think it's one of the reasons we're seeing a lot more of this over, over recent days, why people actually speak about what, uh, speaking out about appreciating their MPs, recognising that politicians aren't evil, that they are generally in it for, for the best of motives. And, and I think that's why we see some real bravery from people going into public life, knowing that it brings risk, but doing it because they want to help their communities.